Well, it's obviously frustrating to, uh, to come back in here um, and, and, you know, after we keep putting ourselves in position to win games and, and we're not stringing things together uh, to finish it, and, and that's our job as coaches. We've got to get our guys to do a better job of executing, uh, making things clear for our guys so they can just go out and play and be able to, to execute in those key moments. Our guys want to win. We want to win for them. Or we want it for them. Um, I will say this. They're, they're playing extremely hard. Um, they're giving great effort. And, and that's encouraging. They're giving us everything they got. Um, and as I said earlier, we keep putting ourselves in position to win. And, and now we got to take steps into finding ways to, to finish it and, and to come away with those wins. And that's on us as coaches. But the only thing we can do is keep our head down. Um, and go back to work. I'm looking forward to the great challenge this week of playing a, a very talented Auburn team coming to town. Um, excited to, to get back home in front of our fans. Uh, hog walk in the morning. We've got a lot of recruits on campus. Um, it's going to be great to get back home. I do appreciate our fans that travel to Kentucky. Um, and I know they're as frustrated as, as with the outcome as we are, but uh, we're, we're not going to flinch. And we're going to put our head down and we'll go back to work without all of them. Raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you for questions. Coach, with so many close losses that you guys have had, do you start maybe exploring being more aggressive? Like maybe I take you back to the, the halftime, maybe trying to go down the field there. Or, um, I don't know, other, other things that are a little more aggressive? Well, I, I think you go and you look at, at every option. Um, you know, we, we keep putting ourselves in position to – to, to win a game and then you, you look back at the small details that led to that and um, obviously the right before half with 55 seconds and they had all three timeouts we had two and uh, our, you know my thought process really was to get a first first down and then to keep and use our timeouts and and, um, and see if we couldn't get a big play and we got to third and two third and three uh, with them all three timeouts I, I literally was waiting up to see if he was going to call timeout and and force us to, 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 to play our third down play or possibly punt the ball back to them and them just scoring off of the drive. So, yeah, looking back on it, you know, you, you know, sure, you, you, you wish you would have maybe done a few things different right there, but uh, I thought at that point with the momentum on their side, I was, I was content with just with third and three to, to get to half. But, uh, yeah, you, you go back and look, there's several opportunities. We had, you know, we had two drives in the second half. We were second and one and we couldn't convert. And, um, you know, that, that's that's a that's an offensive down. And we got to be able to convert second and ones, and whether that's being more aggressive, um, being better in some run fits, whatever it may be. That's on us as coaches to get fits. Hey, Chad, you said after the game, you know, the other night that you're going to reopen or reevaluate the quarterback situation. How do you how do you divide the snaps this week with I guess the first and second team? How tough is it to sort of have a competition when you're also obviously in a game week mode for all? This? Well. You know, Nick and, and Ben will get the one reps, um, and they were in here last night. Um, everybody was ready to get back to work last night, which was very encouraging. Um, and so, uh, with with those guys getting getting a share of the one reps this week, you know, I think the whole thing is is just you know consistency as a as a team, consistency as an offense, and um, that that's really kind of what we're looking for in this. And you know, it is. You know, Bob, uh, when we. We, we, we're trying to stay out of this, but this is just kind of where we're at right now with it. When you look at not finishing the games when you've gotten that close, what are the ingredients that are missing? What, what, what's going to put you over the top on these? Well, and that's our job as coaches to go back and, and, and figure out, is it, you know, you're, you're 20 yards away from winning the last two games, and, and you put yourself in a position to win there at the end, to, to win uh, the majority of our games this season, all, all but one right there on that last drive. And, um, whether it's a stop here, whether it's a, a conversion here, um, you know, putting ourselves in position. Are we, are we in the right play call? Are we, do we have the right check? Are we doing too much? Are we not doing enough? Um, you know, and, and that's really kind of what it comes down to. Um, and we've got to be able to find a way to get the ball in the end zone. And uh, we're putting ourselves in that position. Now we've got to finish the deal. And um, we just we haven't done that. When you looked at Nick's performance, it looked like he was – Throwing behind on some of the slants, was there something mechanical going on? What have you figured out from 
what what made him have an off game? You know, I, I that I don't. Um, you know, he got hit early, um, but I, again, that's your quarterback. You, you understand those things. That's uh, that has never rattled Nick. Uh, Nick's got an incredible arm, um, and you know, he's got got a great talent. Um, was his was his his hips not open enough? I mean, we, we you know we look at all the technic you know the technical things from a quarterback standpoint, but. You know, in the same sense, sometimes you got to sit in that pocket, and, and he did sit in the pocket and, and deliver the ball. And, and um, I mean, there, there was – he'll be the first to admit he, he wasn't on. And, um, but uh, I've, I've, I've watched him in person be, be on many a times in those same plays and, and hit him in stride. And um, so, you know, those are things he'll work through. He'll battle through. We'll help him through. Um, and he'll be, he'll be just fine. Okay, I heard about um, McClure, uh, I guess the Senate transfer. Did he come and talk to you or kind of how that all play out? Just what's your thoughts on that? Well, I spoke with, um, with, with, with him last night, yesterday afternoon, and then again late last night. And uh, we all know his family situation with, with, uh, with his son. And, um, you know, it was, as he shared with me that, Coach, I want to step away from football. Um, and, you know, I want to. Focus on my academics, and focusing on getting a job to help support my family, and, and so at that point, that was that was the way we left it at that at that time. Coach, with with Traylon Burst seeming to emerge every time he touched the ball, and he was kind of a do-it-all player at Warren. How far off with him being a young player might he be from being maybe a guy you lined up in the backfield, more of a do-it-all player here? Well, you know, it kind of goes back. Uh, to what we were saying, we, we, we as coaches got to do a great job of, of making things clear for our, for our players. And, um, you know, he's extremely talented. And, and, and obviously when you get the ball in his hands, he's electric. And, and one of the things as a coach we have to be really careful of is to understand that he's, he's just a freshman um, and not to overload him. And um, I think that we can add more to him, but we can't overload him. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're still working on getting the line correctly on, the, on and off the line of scrimmage, and we've taken great steps in that direction. Um, but I do believe that, yes, there, there are different ways that we can, as coaches, find ways to get him the ball. Absolutely. Without overloading. Yeah, is he got Coleman listed as a start block tackle. Do you anticipate him being back this week? I guess when a guy's missed you know, two games in different parts of the season for concussion protocol. How big a concern is that? Because that's a little different than an ankle or a you know, wrist or whatever. Well, you know, the, the health and well-being of, of all our players is extremely important. And, you know, he was out there yesterday in practice last night. I anticipate him playing this week and being being a part of our rotation. So uh, back into that start rotation. But it was something that's it's been um, that's been carrying on for a few weeks with him, and we wanted to make sure he's back fully healthy before he's ready to go. Chad, maybe a catch twenty two situation, but your DBs played a bunch in that game, and it, maybe if you can rest them during a the game, you you sacrifice something. But um, do you feel like they wore down a little bit, and that played a role in the fourth quarter? Well, you know, I've challenged our coaches, I've challenged our team that we've got to create depth, we've got to play more guys. We spent a lot of time in the open week doing that. And um, um, do, I, do I think that, that that had any anything to do with us wearing down late in the fourth quarter? I, I think that there was a lot of factors that are involved there. I think that you know, anytime your defense is on the field for 37 minutes, it, it's hard. Um, and when we needed to make a, and, and of that, what, 11 minutes of that was in the third quarter. Uh, and when we needed to make a stop, we were we were unable to, to find a way to make that stop. And so, uh, is it was it one certain position group um, that was that was you know out of position? No, 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 it wasn't. Um, you know, we had uh, we had one miscommunication call, um, and um, and it cost us. It was a bust, and it was on the, the touchdown that allowed them to go ahead. Um, and and that you know again, that's, there's no excuse in that. But, uh, um, you know, we, we, we had, had boundary pressure called and, and brought it from the wrong side. And um, when that happens, it, you know, the ball somehow finds it. And that's, that's when he escaped out of the right side. It wasn't a, a lack of uh, being worn down that had anything to do with that. It was, it was uh, we would just miss a line.
in January, he was saying his shoulder obviously was, was hurting him, but there was no way he was going to miss you know, this upcoming game. How, how's he doing? What, what would you, how would you assess his toughness level, I guess? And what is, what's the update on, on Chase Hayden? I guess he had played the last couple of weeks. Uh, Chase, Chase actually started working out last week, um, back out there with us last week, and was out there yesterday, so we'll continue to monitor him and evaluate him and see where he is. Uh, with Rakeem, I think he's playing as well as, as anybody. Um, you know, he's he's running the ball as effective as anybody in the conference. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I think his toughness level speaks for itself, uh, especially playing through an injury that he had last year. Um, a young man that is, is, like all our players, they want it. They want it really bad. Um, and they're giving great effort, and they deserve it. Um, and, you know, our message is we got to keep playing hard and keep playing tough. And, and Rakeem is showing that. He's doing that. And um, uh, he'll be, you know, we anticipate him being fine this week and, and back out there. So, Coach, with the way things have gone this season, sometimes teams have a tendency to splinter a little bit. How do you, what's your message to them? How do you keep them to kind of hunker down and, and keep, keep at it? Well, you know, you, you share with them, first of all, that you, you, you hurt with them, you hurt for them. Uh, we put in an, 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 just an, just an, an enormous amount of time. Um, you know, 353 days a year are, are to prepare for 12 opportunities. And, you know, so the time commitment that these players, these coaches put in is, is, is you know, enormous. Um, and you hurt with them. And you hurt for them. Um, but as I shared with them in the, in the locker room, is, is, you know, it's, it's going to turn. It's, it's turned uh, in the previous places that I've been a part of. Um, it's, it's difficult being stuck in a corner. Um, it's not fun at times being stuck in a corner. And the only way to get out is, is, is put your head down and keep swinging and keep working. And uh, assuring our, our players that they'll continue to keep playing hard and giving the effort that they're showing, um, that we're going to continue. We're, we're going to get out of it. We're going to get out of this corner that we're in. And, um, but it's, 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 it's not easy, and it's not going to be easy, and it's not getting any easier. And, um, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that, uh, uh, that we're going to flinch or we're going to back down because we're not going to do that. These guys haven't done that, and I don't anticipate that happening at all. So our message is we're all in this together. It's, it's not one. It's not a group. It's all of us. And um, the only thing to do is put your head down and go to work. Coach, I think I asked you this after the San Jose State game. Is there anything you do differently just with the way that you go about maybe practice or meetings or anything just – change things up yeah you know and, and, and we have uh, we've actually changed some of our game day routine just a little bit um, you know some of the way that we got into the stadium earlier um, kind of went out and did some flexing together as a group um, you know because I, I felt the last few times we played a 630 kick it's taken us two quarters to really get started uh, I think that after hearing the feedback from our players I really like the fact of getting into that stadium earlier Changed our meeting times up a little bit. Um, you always look for different things to change a routine when things aren't going like you want. And um, you know, from a practice standpoint, I, I think that we've we've done a great job of of, uh, of of you know trying our best to take care of our guys from a health standpoint um, and not and, and being as fresh as we possibly can getting to the games. Um, and so you know, I, I'm, you know, as far as cutting back on any practices or anything like that, I'm not. No, we're not going to do that. You know? Uh, we just got to be more deliberate, and we just got to focus on getting better every day. Yeah, I got two things. Jordan Jones, what's the latest on him? And also, Auburn, from a broad standpoint, your thoughts about them, the, the freshman quarterback who um, didn't have his greatest performance in their one loss, and then um, them losing a running back, and just, you know, defensively, how strong they are. Well, first with Jordan Jones, uh, we're, we're, we're still, you know, kind of, seeing where he is as far as uh, his health standpoint. He's struggling running without pain, um, so I don't anticipate him being back. Uh, Auburn, I mean, you know, when you look at their team, they're, 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 I mean, they got speed all over uh, defensively, uh, as good a defensive front um, as, as I've seen. I've been, a, you know, I've been able to play against. Um, you know, Diedrich Brown is, is, is strong, he's physical, they, they, they play extremely hard, um, they got depth. 
So, you know, we've got to, you know, they tackle. One of the things that you really notice about these guys is, and, and I worked with Kevin Steele. Um, and we were together for a year, and, and uh, he's a great ball coach. He's been all around, and um, these guys play extremely hard, but they tackle well. Uh, offensively, you know, starting Bo, um, and we knew what Bo was coming out of high school. Just a, a great, talented quarterback. Um, he's a freshman, and, and um, but he's doing a great job of, of, um, of, of, of running the offense as, as you know, Coach Malzahn is, is asking him to do. He's being effective running the football. They want to run the football. That's what they, they, they have always, always built on. Um, with obviously with not with, with losing the running back is um, you know, they've got a couple other guys behind him that are just as talented. Whitlow definitely is is a great spark for them. But um, you know Cam Martin's another one that's has got speed, uh, speed to burn. I mean they, 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 these guys are got some great speed. They got seven defensive starters back and there's five six offensive starters back. So uh, you know coming off an open week. There's going to be a few things I'm sure that we haven't seen, but uh, our guys are looking forward to the opportunity, and you can tell that last night as we came back in here. Two more, a couple of things. With KJ, how far away is he from maybe getting into the game playing, and what's he really need to work on? And then the, the secondary, those young DBs that you brought in, talented guys, where are they now, and what do they really need to work on to, to have trust for you guys to put them out there? Well, I, I think when you, when you look at um, – those the DBs, um, you know that's a position that if you, you can lose your confidence in a hurry, and so we got to make sure that as I've challenged our staff to make sure these guys are prepared, that they're ready to get on the field, and when they do get on the field, they completely understand exactly what we're asking them to do. So the worst thing we want to do is put a young guy out there, and all of a sudden he, we, we we lose him for for you know because of lack of confidence and don't have confidence in him. So we got to continue to bring those guys along. Um, and that's our job. Um, and your first question, KJ. KJ, yeah. With KJ, um, you know, extremely talented. Um, has done a great job working on the scout team. He's always in our position meetings, uh, working hard. Um, we'll keep bringing him along, and, uh, and and see where we're at with him. And you know, obviously, we'd love the opportunity to be able to redshirt him if we could. Um, but we're you know, we can keep bringing him along. Last just one. just to clarify earlier about McClure, has he entered the transfer portal like he wants to finish his career somewhere else, or is it just strictly kind of a family personal decision? Yeah, uh, from my communication with him, it was it was I'm stepping away from for family purposes. That that was my communication with him, uh, or it's what he shared with me. He has not entered the transfer portal, or he hasn't as of me walking down here that I've heard of. Um, obviously, if he wants to transfer, then we'll, we'll you know we'll you know, we'll help him out. And He's good.